How dost thou, veterans of the voice? Tis I, thine gracious power, Captain Zack. And today's subreddit is r slash I don't work here lady as well as a bonus story from r slash today fudged up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story is called, I work here but not for you. This isn't your typical retail story since I work in construction, but I think you guys might get a laugh out of this. So I've worked for Company 2 for about 3 years and our main job is putting down fancy looking stone blocks for high end commercial buildings. About two years ago, they moved me over to one of the local multi-million pound houses because they needed more manpower. The job was taken on by Company 1 and Company 2 was brought on as a contractor for the outer block work and tiles. Most of the work was finished when I started on that site, but the buyer was meticulous with pointing out problems. So most of the jobs we did was replacing old damaged stuff. The tolerance for all of the block work was 1mm as per the contract that Company 1 signed. For anyone not familiar with construction, this is an insane tolerance to work towards and led to some hilarious stories, which maybe I'll talk about if people are interested. A little more context. Since this is a private building and technically a finished house, we didn't have hard hats, steel boots, or jackets on, so nothing really to identify ourselves. We basically know everyone on site by name. Two years down the line, and I'm one of two people from Company 2 on site. Enter the bigwigs. One of the main reasons why this job was going so wrong was the fact that they had management for management's management. Stuff got so disconnected that the site management didn't even come down to look what was going on. And so, they didn't know us. The directors of Company 1 came down to look at the job with some upper managers presumably to see how much longer this job was going to take. I was just doing some grouting for a tile I just replaced when the boomers walk in and demanded I go clean up a mess in the other room. I presume they thought I was a laborer since I'm young looking and I had a brush in my hand. They walk off before I get a chance to say anything. I ignore them and carry on with my work since it's not my job to clean up after anyone other than myself. 20 minutes later, I've moved on to a broken tile in the room they asked me to clean out. When the boomers walk in on me, they look straight at me for 5 seconds open mouthed while I move their equipment from one side of the room to the other. This is where the fun begins. Here's the cast. Upper manager. D-bag director. Crappy supervisor. Site manager. And me. What the flippity dude are you doing? I asked you to clean that crap up. Why the flippity dude are you just moving it to the other side of the room? Are you being funny with me kid? Do you even want a job? I don't. No, you've done enough talking. I've seen how long your breaks are. Just freaking move it out. Now, look, I don't work for your company. I work for company too. Look, I know you don't work for us, but can you just clean it out anyways? No, that's not my freaking job. I've heard enough. You're fired. By this point, D-Bag Director is red face mad. Upper manager, you can't fire me. If you want someone else from Company 2, you'll have to call my boss. I can get you the number. Oh, so now you're trying to be a smart booty, are you? Get the F off site. I just pack my stuff and leave. I know he doesn't have the authority to kick me off site. Only site manager can, and he wasn't there even on site. But it's not worth the hassle. All the while, D-Bag Director is berating me on how I'm a terrible laborer. I'm packing up my tools and he stops me from leaving, accusing me of stealing, but after I show him they've all got my name on them, he lets me leave. Somehow, it didn't set off alarm bells that I have masonry tools. Would you believe they meet me down the path while I'm driving down to jeer at me and tell me how useless I am? Very professional. I drive down the road and park up to call my boss. I tell him the whole situation and how I've been kicked off site. He just laughs and tells me he'll be down in 10 minutes. I can take the day off. I get a phone call about 2 hours later telling me that it's been sorted out but not to go back yet. He told the management that if they want to kick one of his staff off site that they need to call him. He'll still be invoicing me out to their company but won't be sending me back until I get a letter of apology for the way they treated me. Two days later, I'm called into the main office to have a look at the letter that came in. It was a small victory, but it tasted sweet. He gave me a copy to keep and he framed his own. 
I started work that day and got an apology from site manager and crappy supervisor who assured me this won't happen again. Rumors started circulating, but nobody really knew what happened until I came back to tell them and showed them the letter. We laughed about it for a few weeks. Don't you find it so heartwarming when a boss has his employees back? Like, that's just, that's really nice. In fact, I like when anyone has anyone's back. Unless it's, you know, a jerk having another jerk's back, in which case that sucks. But you get what I mean. And you know what? Good on this dude for standing his ground against false authority. Which is rampant these days. But I'm a loser and listen to whatever anyone tells me to do, so... <laughs> This story's called, Karen mistakes me for an employee, dot dot dot, I was wearing a Harry Potter shirt, dot dot dot. This is my very first I don't work here lady incident, and boy, it's just as stupid and ridiculous as every other story I've read. I was at the supermarket, which again, seems like every time I go there alone, I attract these kinds of people. And I was wearing a gray shirt that represented Gryffindor. There's... No way anyone could mistake me for an employee, right? Well, Karen's a dumb species. Here's the cast. There's me, Gryffindor Proud, Karen, Dolores Umbridge, and then Mike Guy, the guy who takes no crap from no one. You'll see why. Story. I was with my cart grabbing the groceries that my mother asked me to get, and suddenly I hear, ahem, excuse me. Not being my first entitled parent encounter, I already knew what was happening. And in my head, I said, AGAIN? I turn around and see a fat woman. And I mean, this woman was fat. And she did not have the usual Karen appearance. She was wearing a hoodie, which thankfully didn't reveal any of her skin because I just had lunch and didn't want to lose it, and sweatpants. She really didn't give a crap about what she was wearing, huh? Excuse me, I've been watching you slacking off this entire time and I needed help. I don't know why you got this job if you're so incompetent. <sighs> Lady, do you see this shirt? Do. You. See. It. Gry. Gryfinder? What the hell is that? It's a Harry Potter shirt, woman. Now, use your brain and ask yourself, why would an employee wear a shirt like that to work? Oh wait. That's right, I don't work here. Do you see me wearing an apron? Or an ID on my chest with a name on it? Don't you see the cart full of groceries I'm carrying? How in the ever-loving heck can you confuse me with an employee? Turn your brain on! You disrespectful Benny Hanna! how dare you say that to my face? Well, I'd go around and say that to your back, but my car's fuel is almost empty. That's it, I'm calling you a manager. I need a manager right now! Oh, for God's sake. The Mike guy shows up rather quickly as Karen was screaming for the manager. And I mean screaming. What's going on here? I heard you all the way from the entrance. This brat just disrespected me to my face. I want him fired immediately. The manager takes a quick look at me and his face turns into a I don't get paid enough for this face. Then... Manager starts talking in an annoyed tone, like he's dealt with Karens before. And Manager wasn't taking crap from her. He wasn't polite at all and was really harsh. Lady, let me ask you this. Do you see the shirt he's wearing? It's a Harry Potter shirt. He doesn't work here and you've just wasted my time. If you do not stop harassing this young man right now, I'll have you escorted out of this supermarket. And I'll make sure you never buy anything from this market's brand ever again. Am I clear? What? How dare you? I'll contact you, super! Manager cuts her off. Guess what? I'm allowed to draw politeness towards any customer who breaks the rules or harasses others. Now, all I want to hear is a yes or a no, and I strongly suggest you choose the former. Now, answer the question. Am I clear? Y you can't. I'll give you one final chance. All I want to hear from you is yes or no. So answer the question. Are we clear? Anything other than that, and you're out of here. Karen, quietly and embarrassed. Yeah. Good, you're forgiven now. Now get moving, and I don't want to hear other customers complaining about you. Karen leaves, and I just stare with my mouth open at manager Savagery, and I decide to humor him a bit. Holy bleep, I guess she wasn't the first problematic customer you've dealt with, huh? Oof, you have no idea, my friend. Heh <laughs> heh. 
I thank manager for his assistance and we head our separate ways. While continuing for my groceries, I end up on the same aisle as Karen again. She sees me and just gives me the most pathetic death glare I have ever seen. She's frowning her face to the point where mirrors would crack. And I just shrug and say, better stop with that face. It makes you look uglier than you already are. Karen's face turns red with anger and she thinks about starting arguing all over again. But I threaten to call manager again to get her butt banned. And Karen just clutches her fist, grabs her cart and speeds off. While I just started laughing at this. Later at the registers, I see Karen trying to argue with the cashier about a discount and her line was the biggest one, and the people behind were visibly annoyed. After paying my stuff and walking off, I stop by the manager's desk and inform them that a customer was causing trouble at the register again, and as I walk away, I see manager heading towards Karen's register, and I can only assume what happened next. Okay, multiple things to note. Uh, excuse my bad Mike guy impression, but I thought it'd be funny because he never said what MG stood for. Anyways, second point, that guy totally stole that line from Married with Children. I think that's the show. There was this woman, she's like, oh, how dare you say that to my face? And he was like, uh, I'd say it to your back, but I only have half a tank of gas. And that was funny and iconic, and I am upset that this guy stole it, to be honest. And honestly, no matter what, I really don't think that it's appropriate for a manager to talk to a customer like that. Even if she's being a nuisance, <laughs> like, uh, that's a little, that's a little much. But anyways, moving on, I like anime. This story's called, Sorry, I'm Not in Charge of School Pictures. Okay, so this happened last year at my nephew's school. For some background, sorry it's long, I have two nephews in elementary school and my sister volunteered to help out because if you help out, you get a picture package for your kid for free. And as anyone who has a kid in the US knows, they are very expensive. Anyway, it's a two day event and she has two kids, so she volunteered for both to get free pics of both my nephews. Only she forgot she had a work thing on the second day last minute, so she begs me to go, text me some vague instructions basically help kids look presentable and a tie. So I get there and I have no real idea where to start. I'm wearing a floral shirt and black pants with black flats and have a visitor sticker with my name on it. There are like three other moms there plus photography staff. A lady hands me a bunch of combs and tells me to start fixing kids hair, so I do. And then people start coming up to me. Also I have severe social anxiety so I kind of just went along with everything I was told and was so scared I didn't realize what was happening for a while. The photographer says, We need the kids in two lines. Okay, and I get the kids into lines. A random mom says, Should we get the kids to take off jackets? Sure. Other moms start getting jackets off of kids. Where should we put them? Uh, how about on this table? All the jackets get put on the table. The photography girl says, Can you hand these out to teachers as they get here? and she points to a pile of Ziploc bags with paperwork in them. Sure? I give the paperwork to the teachers as they come in. Make sure the kids have order paper ready. And I go around making sure the kids have papers ready. A random teacher says, How long will this take? Um, uh, 30 minutes? At this point, a guy comes up to me, who I later found out was the principal. We need to move everything up the stage because it's raining and kids need to come in and eat. Okay? I proceed to go to the photography guys and tell them that everything gets moved. This goes on for about two hours since I had never volunteered for something like this. I assumed it was normal for all these people to have me do stuff. But I slowly start to notice everyone coming to me. Still, I didn't put it together till almost the end. You guys did a great job today, thanks. Blah, 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 blah. When will the pictures get here? Oh, uh, I have no idea. You should ask that guy. I point to the head photography guy. Aren't you the one in charge of them? No, sorry, I'm just a volunteer. Another random mom asks, Where can I get my free picture voucher? Oh, I was just about to ask the picture guys. Don't you work with them? No, sorry, I'm just a volunteer. Thanks for all the help today. Kids were really well behaved. Best school I've been to, blah, 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 blah. Thanks. Photography guy starts telling me info about delivery and scheduling and the groups and other stuff. Um, I don't work at the school. I'm just volunteering to get the free pictures. Oh, sorry, I thought you did. You look like someone who's a charge. So, basically, school people thought I worked for photography guys, and photography guys thought I worked for the school, 
And I have no idea why. Maybe it's because I'm almost a six foot female with a resting bee face so I looked intimidating? Anyways, when I put it all together, it made sense, and my sister had a laugh because I was a running around doing all these things, and the day before, she mostly stood around and combed like three kids' hair. At the end of the day, my nephews got their free picks, and everyone was happy with my work, so it was a good day. Well, that was a pretty wholesome story. Um, well, good on her for, you know, doing all that for her sister and her kids. That was pretty nice of her, and, you know, she really didn't get anything at all in return. You know, from the school and the photography people. Other than the free pictures, but again, she did a lot more than required. This story's called, Today I fudged up by calling the police on my own surprise party. Obligatory. This didn't happen today. It actually happened almost 10 months back. A little bit of context. I am an 18-year-old male living in Austria, with my parents and twin sister currently, and I have never really celebrated my birthday by throwing a party for my friends. So my friends decided to throw me a surprise party for my 18th birthday at my parents' house. The F up happened the day after my birthday, actually. On my actual birthday, my family and I celebrated my sister's and my birthday by eating a slice of cake and getting some small presents, nothing special. Since my birthday was on a Sunday, I had to go to school the next day, only a few days left before the holiday started. Since it was Monday, I had a few more hours of mandatory extra chemistry lab, which took until around 17 o'clock. So by the time I was heading home, it was already quite dark. I figured I would be home alone for at least a few hours, since my parents both worked late on Mondays and probably would get home around 10 to 11. And my sister almost always spent her evening at her girlfriend's house, so I assumed I wouldn't see her either. Now to the actual F up. When I arrived at the bus stop near my house, it was already really dark and only street lanterns lit up the streets. On my way home from the bus stop, I saw the light in our house go on for a few seconds and immediately go back off. I was instantly alarmed as I knew no one should be home at the moment. So I went up closer to the house and checked our driveway if there was a car there. There was no car, so neither my parents nor my sister could, rather should, be home. As my mother and father always left with one car in the morning and my sister always took the other one when driving to her girlfriend's. At this point, my heart rate was probably around 170 already. I remained in the driveway for a few seconds and then I actually heard a voice from inside of the house and I completely freaked out. It sounded like a male's voice, although I didn't recognize it. I backed off really quickly from the house towards the other side of the street and called the police from behind some bushes on the roadside. I told them I heard a voice inside of our house, although no one should be there. They told me to stay calm, keep my distance, and that they would send a unit there ASAP. Around 15 minutes later, the police arrived and surrounded the house. There were around four policemen and women there, and one of them knocked on the door, no response. At this point, even a few more police officers had arrived. They got out of the car with some kind of battering ram. Long story short, they broke the front door down and ran into the house with their tasers or guns or something out, I couldn't really see all that much in the dark, and shouted something like, Police! Show us your hands! When that happened, I could hear shrieks and screams and people being escorted out of the house to our front yard. You guessed it right! They were my friends and my sister, who had, intelligent as she is, parked her car somewhere else to make me think she isn't home. I instantly tried to defuse the situation and apologized profusely to the police officers who had just tried to arrest my closest friends. In the end, my friends invited the policemen and women in for a cup of coffee and a slice of cake, although they sadly couldn't stay for more than a few minutes since they got a message over their walkie-talkie thingies and they had to set off immediately. Ever since this happened, we have a great story to laugh about at every single birthday party. <laughs> yep, surprise parties are fantastic for everyone who doesn't have anxiety. <laughs> oh gosh, that is so... <laughs> Oh man, I've never had a surprise party, so um, I don't know how freaked out I'd be, but this is really funny. <laughs> he called the cops. <laughs> they used a battering ram. That is beautiful. That is a fantastic story. I'm glad they shared this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.